This is the lube oil pump for me milling machine. It's what they call a one shot system. You press it and it puts your shot of oil in all the relevant points on the milling machine. The feed nuts, the slides. It works to a certain degree. It's got a few leaks on it. But the major problem I've got is I was using a lot of white water. Uh, cutting some gears and the white water has gone into the reservoir filled up with water. So I need to reposition it. I'll get a close up shot of that so you can see the, the mess it's in. So the water has gone in and floated the oil on top of the water and you've got the emulsified mess in the bottom. It's a little bit like a radiator header tank of a rover when the head gasket fails. So I take it off, clean it out and move it somewhere, possibly across here. There's already a hole there, maybe it'll have mounted across there somewhere, out in the road. It's just pegged up with this push fit, 4 mil push fit plastic stuff, like airline, it's good enough for the job. So this, this was on when I bought the, when I bought the mill machine. And I've always been going to move it, and I've sort of never getting, never getting around to it. I think before I do watch more, I'm going to give the machine a move I don't, as you can see it's well covered in shite. It may go, may go on there. There's already one hole drilled and one more in there, not do any harm. Just a big loop of pipe down into there. That's well away from any water. Clean the machine down and empty all the contaminated oil out of here. So we'll have a look inside it. It's a simple plunge I pump with a, a strainer on the bottom. The strainer is obviously full of. I'm not quite sure what it's full of. Looks like a bit of material of some sort, some sort of filter. You can shut the rest of that out of there. Horrible. It's like a felt, 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 I'm not giving problems I wouldn't have thought. Just clean the tank out and reassemble it and just run some nice clean oil through it before we hook it up. Right, that's better. There's already one hole drilled there, 6mm, drilled and tapped hole. I think I was a lamp on there at one time so we can utilise that one hole that's already there.
that's not going to affect anything being there. That cable's nice and flexible. It moves up and down as the knee moves up and down. If you were to get a hold of that corner there. to get one more bull and it needs two really because it there's quite a bit of force on you. you bollocks you bastard quite a bit of force when you push down on the pump you notice it, it actually pumps when you let go of the handle that frames are pumping the, the springs of power stroke so to speak and right, I'll drill another hole in there Put some nice nice long drills I might as well use them Right. <laughs> You've done that twice now, you stupid twat. Right, I bought a new bit of formal plastic pipe. It simply goes onto there like that, so we'll just loop it around and leave a nice big loop. Just for when the, the knee moves up and down. Put the pipe through there and connect it into the into the block inside of there. Or what I may do was just use this straight coupler I bought. Couple it straight into there, then it's easy to disconnect it. If I wind the knee all the way down. And so basically that's just far down so it's gonna go. See the loop in the pipe like that, and that's going to go up, it'll not cause any problems. And that pushes into there. Before I use it, I'll put some oil in just to bleed the system, just to prime it, get any, any shite out of that pump. There's loads and loads of arguments. People argue about what oil you should and shouldn't lubricate machines with. I've had machines for a long time and I've always used 1040 car engine oil. This stuff here happens to be straight machine oil, straight hydraulic oil. I think it's Telus oil, Telus hydraulic oil. Just because that's all I've got at the minute. I'll bleed it a little bit through. It's nice and thin this, there's the water and horrible stuff coming. And there's your rubber, your rubber head gasket, coolant, these always leak a little bit then that's sort of not the best things in the world. I keep pumping and it starts to run clear. That's pretty good there now. Right, so we can connect that. 
on there, that goes on to a, like a manifold inside the machine. I think that's six pipes go to the various lubricating points. This is looking up underneath the, the knee of the mill. That's a little manifold there that all the ice pipes come out of. You see the worm gear up there. In all its glory. Johnny, a bastard. See how it works. You push the handle down, that primes a pump, when you let go, it pushes the oil up. You see the oil going around the pipes, I think you can see the oil going around the pipes. Roughly you can see the bubbles in the, the pipes as the oil gets forced round. See it coming up the pipe there. And that's going to the various parts of the, the machine that need oil. Right, I'll probably put enough oil through there to lubricate this for the next 10 years. You actually feel a difference straight away. See the oil coming out. I made a new Z axis feed, screw and nut, quite some time ago, a longer one. And I did put a grease nibble on the bronze bush in there, and that's it's a square of grease like that. And that's all it takes to keep that nice and lubricated. That's black because it's got CV joint grease on it, which is a real, a real nice grease. You see the oil's getting to the various places because it's pissing out under here. This package turned about work earlier this week. It's from a lad called Andy Taylor. I speak to Andy quite often on the Migwell Forum. It's obviously a, a big box of assorted nuts, bolts, washers, self tappers, various fasteners. It's probably a lifetime supply in here. What I'll do with this, I'll share it out with you when I show the lads who give me things. Some lads can get tool tips, some lads can get stainless bar. So what we'll do, we'll share out and it means that everybody can get something, basically something for nothing and we'll help each other out that way. Anyway, Andy, thanks very much. I'm going to show you these will all be put to good use. Today I've come across my friend's mix workshop because he's got this big Bintonberry lathe. In the lathe we've got mounted half a crankcase of an Alvis radial aero engine. It belongs to a friend of his. Um, the engine obviously doesn't work anymore and what he wants to do is make a feature to hang on his wall. So basically we're going to machine this flat, bore the centre out, do a similar with the other side of the crankcase put it all together, put the cylinders on, then he can hang it on his wall. Um, Mickey's going to do most of the machining, I'm going to do the video. Right, Michael.
That's quite a fearsome. Uh, <laughs> well, nine of them one is going to look good. It's look the best, isn't it? Yeah, we should all have one of them. Excellent. I think half the idea is, you know, possibly a clock, the full size and the centre. You know. Yeah. These are all getting polished up. Black crank to finish on the, on yeah, the rest of it. It's going to look nice. <laughs> See once again, thanks very much for supporting me channel, clicking the like button. But a special thanks as usual for all the well wishes that are still coming in uh, for Deb, my wife. It is absolutely fantastic. And of course, they're coming in towards every far as well. It just shows that there's some real nice people out there in this world. I mean, these are really troubled times, really troubled, and it is nice to know that there are genuine, honest people out there. Anyway. Thanks once again for watching. Bastard. Here we are back of there. Oh. Where the bastard's gone. I'm actually surprised that never broke the friggin' thing. Right.